Good evening and welcome to the Meadowbrook Library. I'm Angie from the Family Nutrition Program and this is my volunteer, uh, Ruth. We're going to talk about um, the beginning Instapot today. Um, I hope most of you have at least heard of an Instapot. We're going to go over a few safety um, features first and um, go over the buttons on the front. Uh, the, the Instapot is actually a pressure cooker and that's what causes the, the food to kill cook so fast and come out so tender. So um, one of the things is we need to be careful of the sides being warm. Um, this is the top of the cooker. Um, there's a, a knob here that says sealing and venting. When you start to cook, you want to make sure that that is turned on sealing. When it is on venting, that is when the steam is going to come out. Another important feature here is a little floating valve. Um, when that floating valve is up, that means there's steam in the pot, and we want to make sure never to open the lid when that valve is up. Um, each Instapot is different. Um, they have uh, different buttons on here for things like um, rice, multigrain soups, meats, poultry. Uh, there's also rice um, cakes, and cakes are actually come out really good and moist in the Instapot. Um, and steamed vegetables and fish. Another safety um, thing we need to keep in mind is we should never fill the Instapot over three-fourths in this, this max line here. If we're cooking beans or pastas, those frothy foods that will bubble up, we want to make sure that we only do that half. Ruth has never used the Instapot, so we're going to have her um, cook our chicken today, and what we're going to do is actually cook frozen chicken breast. A lot of times we're busy at home and we don't have anything ready. If we have uh, chicken in the freezer, it usually takes us a long time to thaw it and then um, cook it. But if we have the Instant Pot, we can put it in there and um, cook it really uh, quickly. So Ruth is going to lay our frozen chicken breast in the bottom of the Instant Pot. Then we're going to add two cups of chicken broth and two cups of water. Uh, you can add salt and pepper if you like, but it's not necessary for this recipe. Um, the broth and the water is not going to completely cover the chicken breast, but it's still going to cook all the way through that way. And we only have one cup of water. Mm -hmm. But it came out to uh, two cups of broth and two cups of water. So we need another? No. We're, we actually use the extra half okay. in there. So now Ruth is going to put the lid on the Instapot. Okay. okay. Now the beef has told us that the Instapot lid is on there correct and we're going to turn it to lock and there's actually a little um, sign here that tells you which is locked and which is unlocked. So Ruth is going to turn it and that's going to let us know it's locked. And then on the um, the uh, flipper up here, we want to make sure it's to ceiling. And once it's to ceiling, she's going to go down here on the front and press the button that says manual. And then we're going to go up here and change the time to 16. So either use the up or down button there to change the time to 16. Where's the up or down? Okay. So we just started cooking, so we want to cancel. Okay. That's okay. And then we're going to push manual again. Manual, yeah. And then it says 30 minutes, so we want to do less. So we'll do the down button right there mm -hmm. until we get to 16. Okay. Okay. Once it gets to 16, steam is going to start building up in the Instant Pot. Once it gets up to the uh, right amount of temperature, then our uh, cook time will come on there. It'll say 16 and then it will cook for 16 minutes. So our Instant Pot has reached temperature and now it, is, it started at 16 and it will count down and uh, that will be our cooking time. If you look on top of the Instapot, you'll see that the floating valve is up 
and that's when we never want to try and open the Instapot. Um, another good feature I'd like to tell you about the Instapot is that you can also use it as a slow cooker, so you wouldn't necessarily have to have both appliances. You could have just the Instapot to do both things. Okay, so our timer is counting down on our Instapot. We have just a couple of minutes left. Um, when the time gets down, it'll beep for you. And then there's three different ways you can release the steam from your Instapot. The first one's natural release. That's when we'll just let the pot sit and release the steam on its own. Uh, usually it's 10 or 15 minutes to do that. Then you have a semi-natural release where we let it sit 10 minutes and then uh, flip the valve and let the steam come out. And then you have quick release. Um, with quick release, you just uh, flip the switch, all the steam comes out at one time, and that's what we're gonna do today. So how many minutes do we have left, Ruth? Two minutes. So we have two minutes. Um, what we're doing today uh, with our chicken, there's a lot of things that we can do with this. Uh, if you're cooking this amount of chicken, at one time, you can meal prep with it. Uh, you can shred the chicken up and have chicken tacos, um, make pulled pork, pulled chicken sandwiches. Um, you have chicken that you can use for casseroles and soups, um, chicken salad. Um, a really good way to mix up if you're going to pull your chicken is to, you can't uh, mix it up in this bowl, but you can take your hand mixer and put it in another bowl and use your mixer on your chicken and it shreds it really fast for you. So it's a lot easier on your hands. Um, and it's really important, I think, when you're releasing the steam out of the Instapot to make sure the kids are out of the room, just in case most of the steam goes up, but it kind of, you know, I don't know about you guys, but my kids were unpredictable when they were little, so it's just better to have them out of the room um, when we're doing that. So when our, so we reach time, what we're gonna do is our valve is still up. So we're gonna do the quick release. So Ruth is gonna put the towel over, mm -hmm. and then she's gonna flip the switch. And what the towel does is keep the steam from being so much all at one time. Now it really smells really good. What we're gonna do is check our little floating valve and make sure it's down. And there's a little bit of steam still coming out, so we wanna wait till the rest of that comes out. And it's, it's slowly going down. And our floating valve has dropped, so we can go ahead and, and open the pot now. So, Ruth, do you want to open that? The swing? Mm hmm. A little bit of it for the, there you go. All right. And so, we always want to check and make sure our chicken is completely done. So, what we're going to do is take one out and put it on our plate and use our um, meat thermometer to check. What we'll do is check the uh, widest part of the chicken and we wanna make sure it's at least 165 degrees in the middle. If for some reason it didn't reach 165, what we could do is put it back in the pot and cook it for another five minutes. 
it's still moving? Has it reached 165 yet? Not there yet. That was one on top though. Mm -hmm. It's still going. And we reached 160, so and it's still going up. All right, and I want to show you guys how easy this is to shred um, when you're done. See, it comes right apart, and it's really tender and juicy. Um, and like I said, there's lots of things that you can do with this. You can make pulled chicken sandwiches, chicken salad, um, add it to your soups and casseroles. Um, it would be a really good way to make chicken and dumplings. You're going to have a good broth in here. Um, if you meal prep, this is a good thing to use too. Uh, you can always save your broth back. Um, a good way to do that is put it in the ice cube tray and you have it in the uh, freezer and that way you're not wasting anything and you don't have to, to buy the pre-canned things. Um, but I hope you guys learned something today. If we have another um, in the series, we'll do something a little bit more complicated. But I want to thank Meta, um, Metaview, for, Meadowbrook, I'm sorry, for having us here today and Ruth for helping us.